STDs have reached an unprecedented level in the U.S. But we were looking at a survey of which states have the highest rates. Oh. The, the, here in yes. California? It, it's, okay, so the top three states, Alaska, Louisiana, North Carolina, um, have the highest rates, followed by Mississippi and New Mexico. What's going on in Alaska? Hardy, Hardy. Have you worked in Alaska? I have. So you know, what's going on in Alaska? It's cold. They have a lot of, like, domestic violence problems. They have, they have a lot of issues in Alaska. A lot of drinking, a lot of stuff they going on. They work hard, they play. Well, and sexually transmitted diseases hard. do travel in clusters, so to speak, meaning when you have higher rates of chlamydia, you're gonna have higher rates of gonorrhea. And interestingly, those two, along with syphilis, are at record highs in some places. And the reason this matters is because it is regional in some cases, and some regions have higher rates of certain STDs, and you have to be aware of it because if you're not aware of it, if you're not protecting yourself, we often think of these STDs as harmless little things, oh, no big deal, but the truth is, especially some of these, hey, non-harmful STDs, they can lead to infertility in women. Absolutely. Because they travel in packs, you can find things like... What are the STDs that could create infertility in women? Gonorrhea, and most people have no symptoms when they have chlamydia. Most women have no symptoms when they have gonorrhea. So really, like an untreated, sexually transmitted infection today can mean infertility tomorrow. And yeah. over, like he was saying, over 20,000 young women are becoming fertile. You know the most, you know the most common way you'll know you have an STD? No, what's the most common way? Get tested. Meaning, yeah. the most common symptom is none. And that's why STDs, when they start to rise, most, a lot of times you just don't know because a lot of people, they're out sleeping around. You can have and if you're not protecting water yourself, water you may not. I mean, Dr. Landry, you are Miss Alabama. So why, why is the South being hit so hard here? What, what can we do to? I'm not proud of that, but yeah. Thank you. Well, is I, yeah, it is, it's, yeah, Louisiana, but I went to school in Alabama too. Yeah, so it's the North southern, Carolina. the southern, yeah, the southern states, and it's like Travis said too. Like it tr kind of travels in packs, so no, you have dating people, apps is making it e e any easier nowadays. It's definitely making it. You're, not. you're finding this more common in in younger individuals. Obviously, they're look, they're less settled in their lives, fewer in monogamous married relationships, but I, I do think that we have to ask ourselves. We live in a day and time where there, I think there's more awareness than ever, but when you're seeing a rise in rates of these particular STDs, it does raise a bit of a red flag. And I think part of it is culturally, look, we, we want to, on this show, we want to celebrate everything. We want to, we want to celebrate healthy sexual relationships. We want to celebrate yeah. all those things. But I've always felt like lately said, there's such a... Condom. And well, and that's the thing, things. I've always felt condom. like, especially Hollywood, there is such a casualness with it nowadays that if, if you're a young kid and you're learning by watching TV, you're going to see all of the sultriness of sex and all these things that you're going to potentially emulate. And the reality is Hollywood, I can't tell you the last time I've watched a Hollywood show where the, the guy or gal comes home and says, hey, I have an STD. You don't see that part of it, right? <laughs> it doesn't happen. You just see all the hot shout, and, and no one talks about the aftermath ever, and I think that's why we have to, and just be aware of it. And also, if you have not been tested, get tested, because if, you're, if you are having sex, you need to know and make sure that you are STD-free, because again, most times, there's no symptoms at all. And you can do an HIV swab at home before you get started. And then there's like so many places that, that do home. testing for free now. You see they signs are. everywhere that they do testing for free. So it's really just taking the time and really paying attention to that. Why wouldn't you?